All right, everybody, uh, I get a lot of people asking me, how do you rebuild the CPS TRS-21 or the TR-21? So I'm gonna make this quick video and kind of blast through it really quick, showing you guys how to take this apart. Before we do, I'm just gonna cover some of the tools that you're gonna need. It's nice to have a little pick for scraping any of the little small crevices of any sort of uh, buildup or gunk. You're gonna need a 3 seconds hex. You're gonna need a 5 seconds hex. You're gonna need a 3 16 hex. This here is a 3 8 uh, deep socket drive. You'll want a flathead possibly for kind of prying some stuff out of there if it gets kind of stuck. You'll need a Phillips number two for taking off the case from the outside. Uh, you may need an adjustable wrench here. And then finally, a bearing puller might be necessary to get the bearing off the end. So a couple of tools, let's bang through it real quick. So to start, let's take the handle off. This is 3 16 hex. There's three of these here. And I'm using a magnetic tray to keep everything organized. So first things first, we'll take the handle off. And there you go, there's a the handle. Next thing we'll do is we'll take the plastic cover off. So there's five screws, number two, there's one on top. Two on each side. One more. All right, now we have all five screws. You can pull up and lift off the plastic cover here and expose all the electronics. Then what we're gonna do is unplug the pressure temperature switch here. There's two, there's one blue on the bottom, one yellow on top. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our 3 16 hex again and take off the head. So crack each one of these. Looks like some of these might have been stripped from the customer. So it looks like they've gotten in here before. Yep. Pretty common. Yeah, pretty common. That first one was really, wasn't cracked like that. It should crack. So it looks like they might have tried to get in here before. Now let's be careful here. We don't strip this out any further. See if they have a. There we go. So there's the head completely off, four bolts, and then make sure you watch any gaskets sticking to the top. You'll see that there's your inlet and outlet valves. You wanna check for any of these being stuck. These look pretty good to begin with. Usually these valves, you can press on them and you'll see that there's a spring behind these smaller valves. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure to push on and make sure the spring is not getting stuck back. Looks like those are good. Next, we're going to go ahead and take off each one of the cylinders. And you'll know as soon as you start pulling them off here, there's a gasket at the top. Um, if these come off real easy like this, you see how these are just really sliding off. There's not too much grip on there. I could tell you right away these pistons are going to need to be replaced. The seals here are what end up being the failure point in this TRS-21. They just wear out over time and they can't hold a nice tight seal you can see they're just kind of sliding on and off they have a little bit of seal there but under uh, high pressure they're going to leak so take these off you'll also check for scoring inside make sure that they're smooth these are nice and smooth no scratching going on so these look fine set these to the side then we'll take our three six or sorry three eight socket deep socket and we'll take off the four bolts holding the top of the crankcase on and you'll see this just little shroud around the outside here. I like to leave this on. It just saves me one step from having to take off the screws. So I'll loosen all four of these. 
go back and I'll just unscrew them. So we're almost done. We're almost down to the main uh, body of the pump. You can see it's not that many bolts, not that many screws. So I'll take off now the top of the crankcase and you'll see that we've exposed the inside of the crankcase here where the pistons sit. So I'll set this off to the side. Now I'm gonna take a 530 seconds hex, take these two screws out the front. Now you'll notice that there's some shims right here on the top. So you'll see this came off real easy. These are the shims you want to make sure not to lose. So I'll set these over here. Probably another one stuck to the bottom or we'll look for it. But I didn't see a second shim. Now usually the factory will shim up these two points here to make sure that the, the head will sit high enough up and not get knocked on by these pistons. So make sure that you find any shims that came along with it. Then we're gonna slide off the front of the cr crankcase and you'll see that there's a bearing inside of here. Now, if you have a hard time pulling this off, you wanna make sure to look on the bottom and there's a hole right here. And you'll wanna spin this bearing until you see there's a hex hole, mm -hmm. which is a 332nd. And then you can come in here and crack that loose and you should be able to either pull the hole front off and the bearing should stay on the actual shaft or you'll have what happens here the bearing will stay here and you'll be able to pull the whole front case off so bearing will stay in here and that's pretty much it now we're into the crankcase this one does not look too bad on the inside it looks like there's a little bit of grease from the uh pistons that got out and escaped which is pretty normal they come pre-greased mm -hmm. that's not too bad they can be no, a lot more sludge yeah. up in there and the like the outside walls of the pump is pretty clean yeah the, the whole inside of the, the pump is pretty clean i think actually they clean this one and look what i mm -hmm. found down here there's oh, a the shim. shim so it was down in the bottom i don't know if that fell off when i uh came in here but i don't think it did i think it was actually i think somebody's been in here it looks like somebody's cleaned this pump before so we'll make sure just to kind of go in here now the next thing you want to do is take off all your pistons you'll see that first one just slides right off right no problem slide it off but to get to the second one you're going to need to take the cam off the cam lobe and you'll see that there's just a three six or uh, sorry three sixteenths um hex screws on each side so i'll go ahead and take these off we're almost done Now this is, can be a little bit of a tricky point because this is where you're going to get parts that kind of stay stuck on the shaft and are a little bit difficult to pull off sometimes. And uh, I'll show you some tricks to kind of getting that off. So we'll pull this out. You'll notice that there's thread locker on these. So when you install them, you'll try to want to put some thread locker on them. It'll be all right if you don't, but you, know, you want to follow what the factory does. <clears throat> Last thing you want is these things getting loose when you're running a motor at hundreds or thousands of RPM. Oops. All right, so these are getting loose now. I think these are gonna slide off here. Usually they kind of stick on here, but this pump is pretty clean. Get my fingers in here. All right. So then you should be able to just slide this cam lobe off. This, you'll see that that just came off there pretty easy. There's two halves to the cam lobe, but the first one comes out and then you can take out the second piston ring, okay? And then slide out the second cam. And you'll see that the shaft, you kind of see that there's a little bit of the, uh, uh, the, uh, and then the thread locker that gets down into here mm -hmm. and can get on the shaft. And then it makes it a little bit harder to kind of slide this off. So that's why I said earlier, you can use a little flathead behind the spacer and just kind of push it back. Or if it gets really stuck on there, you can stick something thin through there, grab both sides and kind of 
pull it off. This one's stuck pretty good. It's probably a good reason not to overdo it on the thread locker if you're yeah, exactly. adding any of that. So there you go. There's the second half of the cam. These just go in half and half so that they, right. they make a lobe. And then the last piece you can take out is a spacer behind here. And then now you completely disassemble the TRS-21 on the inside, the crankcase. Squirt it down with some alcohol. Mm -hmm. Good cleaning, scrubbing Wipe down. it down. Then what I like to do is also clean the shaft. I'll take a little scotch right, and I'll actually plug in the motor and I'll just take the scotch right and try to clean up the shaft a little bit. Try and get some of that stickiness off of there. And then the reverse, we'll reassemble it. We'll put some brand new pistons in here. This is what we're gonna replace today. Um, we have a simple repair kit for these pistons that you can grab and put in the pump. And then you should be able to test it, get the shutoff switch, which we'll show you in another video. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, but you can do a compression test after you replace these and get everything suited up back together. Plug in the, the overprotection switch, kick it on, and you should be able to get 550 PSI build up and shut off this switch here. And then you'll know that you built rebuilt the pump correctly and got compression back again. So, there you go, there's a teardown of the TRS-21. Look, it only took 10 minutes. Should take you no more than maybe 30 minutes to rebuild, 45 minutes to rebuild and clean, so take care.